What's up guys, Chris Clemens here, uh, AKA Clemonade, um, here in Emporia, Kansas. A couple months after releasing my forehand video, I did and I got a lot of good feedback on it. I got a lot of questions. I wanted your guys' questions so I could kind of understand what you guys needed from me. So today, I'm gonna help you guys understand a little bit more about how to get better at throwing forehands and answer some questions you guys have. All right, so uh, first question, Gabe asks, if I throw mid-ranges more nose up or, mo or more nose down? Um, you know, I've never really thought about that much. I actually throw a lot of drivers, uh, and then I throw my putter quite often for upshots. If I have to, I will throw mid-ranges. I'll throw my verdict probably the most, or even my fuse. Um, I do throw them kind of flat. I guess it kind of depends on what kind of shot you're going for. Uh, you know, the fuse is more like a putter, more of a flippy mid-range, so I'll kind of put it nose up and kind of let it pan if that's what I'm trying for. The verdict is more, you know, like a felon. It's faster, it can hold up to that torque. So I can throw it a little more nose down or flat and really try to get through on it. It's something you just kind of have to you know, learn and learn your discs. I think each disc is gonna be a little different. If it's more over stable, maybe more nose down. If it's less stable, maybe more nose up. Two Buck Chuck asks, where do I grip with my thumb? I think it's gonna be different for a lot of people. I've always noticed Ricky Wysocki kind of puts his disc like way, way back in his hand. And uh, for me, I put it kind of kind of far back there. It just depends on what kind of shot I'm going for, where it feels comfortable for me. It's not quite the same every time, but it's pretty close. Uh, the thumb, I think it's right on my on my pointer finger is what it feels like to me. Just grabbing the disc right now. If I hold a putter, it's kind of the, kind of the same. So yeah, it's not too far in, you know, to the disc and not on the edge. It's just kind of a natural, you know, how it feels good in your hand. Um, I think probably. If you go to 10 different pros, their grips are all gonna be different. So I think it's something you kinda have to learn for yourself and what feels natural. If you just throw a disc up in the air and then catch it and kinda put it in there to throw a forehand, that's probably where your thumb should be. All right, uh, so Peabody's asks, um, basically about a one finger grip, throwing with just your index finger and your thumb. Uh, to me, like just doing that right now, it feels very, very weird, very foreign. Uh, I guess just because my middle finger usually is stacked on the, on the flight plate there and on the rim. Um, I feel like I would have very little control and like it feels very loose in my hand. Uh, so maybe if you were using it for like a short little touchy up shot, maybe a better touch. Um, but for anything with any power, I would probably advise against it. I, I wouldn't use it personally, uh, and I wouldn't. I don't really see the benefits of doing it either. Paul, uh, P-A-L-L, -L, in the YouTube comments asks about nose angle. Um, I feel like this is one that's fairly common. I remember when I first started, I was throwing backhand, and I would always, you know, hyzer it way up into the air, uh, you know, which you see a lot of newer players do. And so what I tell a lot of them, I'm like, hey, throw it into the ground throw with your front shoulder and like throw into the ground. And so I'll tell that to myself, uh, especially with forehands, you know, because the mistake I do make more times than not is kind of hyzering them out or throwing them nose up because I'm not following through. You get a little lazy. And so you want to, I mean, basically just, you know, just get down on it and s slow down and really concentrate on your release and really concentrate on that nose angle. Make sure your grip is nice and tight. And if you have to, uh, throw a mid-range, throw a putter, try to try to work on that nose angle, um, you know, and slow down. It's just any, it's just like a backhand. You know, if you're having trouble with the backhand, you kind of slow down, you slow down your run up, you slow down the discs that you're throwing to try to learn that proper technique and the forehand is, is the exact same. The nose angle is a good one because that's something I'm like I struggle with too. Yeah. Usually at the beginning of, of the season. All right, so Jack asks about gaining distance and uh, kind of if you know you can muscle a disc versus you know having that good clean wrist snap. So me, I played baseball my entire life, and so something that is drilled into you, and even in basketball, I played that as well, is you know having good wrist snap. Like if you're jump shooting, you want that wrist to snap. If you're pitching, you know, or throwing a ball, you know everything's kind of slow, but then you want your wrist to snap at the end. 
and disc golf is the exact same way. You know, when you're throwing a backhand, you want to, you know, cock it and then snap that at the end and have that pop. And so forehands are the same way. But I myself, I can feel if I am, you know, muscling a disc. It doesn't come out super clean comes out wobbly, I'm kind of leading with my shoulder and I'm just trying to like muscle it. And so, I mean, the, the tip that I would have is, you know, there's things called the hammer drill. I'm sure Danny knows about that one from a disc golf course review like 10, 15 years ago. Um, and you just kind of take a hammer and you just kind of snap, snap it or you can take a towel and do different things to kind of get used to that feeling of snapping it. If you guys have probably seen Paul Eulaberry, he, he will, uh, when he's warming up his forehand, he kind of like smacks it. And so he's getting that wrist snap and what you're supposed to feel. You know, you're not supposed to lead with your, your shoulder and like muscle it or just like be tight. You want everything to be loosey-goosey until the very end and then you just kind of pop it with your wrist. And so wrist, wrist snap is very, very important. I believe that's where I probably get a lot of my powers, kind of the hip and then that end wrist snap. And if you'll notice when I come through on my forehand, a lot of the time I'm hitting it and then I'm kind of rolling my wrist over. And a lot of people say don't do that, but like if you're gonna throw a big, big forehand, you're gonna have to do that because you're gonna be throwing pretty overstable discs. All right, so uh, Corey asks about different disc selections, throwing forehand and backhand. And this is something that I definitely think about quite often. And you know, if I go and play Maple Hill, you know, last year, I. I remember throwing certain shots on certain holes and so when I come back this year I could be throwing a little bit different. My forehand could be working a little bit better or vice versa. My backhand could be working a little bit better so I might switch that up uh, you know compared to what I threw last year. But you know as far as I, I kind of mold my bag by speeds and you know so I have like the 7 speed, 9 speed, then the 12 to like 13 speeds and yes if I'm going to throw an enforcer on a backhand uh, for a shot it's anywhere from 350 to 425 or so um, and if I, I will throw a warhorse on a forehand if I need it to be very overstable if it's 350 to 400 and over that. I usually lean on the defender. You know, if, if I am throwing a getaway on a backhand for a shot, it's anywhere from 325 to 400 or so, and the felon's the exact same. I can throw the felon up to about 400, you know, if I really get on top of it and really hit it hard, maybe with a little bit of tailwind, uh, and I can throw it all the way down to like 275, 300. I, I'm a little different. I do like really domey discs, especially for backhands, but a lot of the, fender, the defenders that I throw, are uh, pretty domey. But uh, actually lately I've kind of got away from the domier ones, or at least the super poppy toppy ones. These are a little flatter. And so they are feeling really good for backhand and forehand. Um, you know, I, a lot of my explorers are pretty domey. Uh, my getaways are pretty domey as well. And so when I do lean on those for forehands, it's you, you have to be very careful about how you release a disc when it's, when it's very domey uh, with a forehand because it's very easy to roll. It's very easy to get caught on your fingers. Sometimes it doesn't come out as clean. And so that would be why I wouldn't use a getaway or explore as much for a forehand off the tee. Um, when I do usually use them is in the woods if I'm like leaning out, throwing a big turnover, or I gotta like flip something flat. Um, anytime it's a fairway shot with the forehand, I'm usually going the felon or if I need to like overstable skip, I'll go a triple X. All right guys, uh, thanks for watching. You guys can become a better disc golfer if you check out the uh, Dynamic Discs YouTube channel. Check me out on Instagram, check DD out on Instagram, go to their website. Uh, just check out all the stuff that we have for you guys. The disc golf stuff is everywhere right now, but I appreciate your questions. Uh, send me more, keep sending them. I wanna keep doing these videos, keep helping you guys out. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.